And we're back, Jonathan. Yes, another episode of The Road to Go, episode 26. Episode 26. Yeah. You know, I really liked our last episode. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> that was a really fun one. Yeah, Sam was an interesting person. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, super, a- knowledge- super knowledgeable. A lot of stuff was way out of my league. <laughs> Yeah, you some of some of the stuff he talks about is out of my league too, but it's really fun. It's so much fun to talk to him. I had a good time. Um, we have someone for our 30th episode. We're gonna right. have a another uh, another uh guest um host here at the Road to Code podcast. And this is a guy that didn't quite go through the elaborate um path that our last uh, couple of uh, guest hosts took. He took a little bit of a different path to learn software development. So we're going to be able to talk to him and and his experience and where he's at now uh, in his software development career. So it'll be, we'll we'll get to, we'll get to take a peek into his road to code. (laughs) That's cool. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So when we last left, we had finished up the significant birthdays, right? And yep. we pretty much got to a point where we can do some basic crud. Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself here. We're supposed to be talking about merchandise and Merch. giving it away. What is Whoa. wrong? What is wrong with me? Stop giving. We don't stop giving away just because we're rich now. Because <laughs> really, we're not. <laughs> Thirty views on our videos now. We're pretty famous. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's impressive. I mean, thirty views on on our on our videos. Yeah, it's like we're moving up in the YouTube rank. <laughs> where we've what, should we say that we at least have a Chevron on our sleeve? <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about merch before we get into the um, into the podcast. Yes, we have merch official road to code merch we have women's t-shirts men's t-shirts totes and a coffee mug yeah i think we made it official every every guest host that we have gets one of each yeah and we're packing it up i mean we're we're just going to start giving this stuff away because we have a whole warehouse full of this stuff and a whole bunch of this stuff yeah (laughs) unlimited storage (laughs) <laughs> just like google photos which <laughs> is no more <laughs> um so people can buy it but if they're broke like you and i jonathan how do they get free merch yes we are doing a giveaway for our subscribers all you have to do to qualify is be subscribed and also leave a comment on any one of our videos what if they don't have anything to say jonathan or a comment, you can just put, show me the merch. Nice. All right. So subscribe, and it automatically enters you into the raffle for the end of the, the last Sunday of the month, where we run a little program that we wrote with one of our guest hosts. And if your number comes up, then you're the winner. We'll pick a runner up. And um, if the winner doesn't answer, we'll hand it over to the runner up and we'll send you some merch so make sure to subscribe if you're already subscribed you can continue to win merchandise every month by leaving a comment and you heard jonathan if you have nothing to say just put in there show Show me the merch merch. yeah cool all right let's get into the meat and potatoes of this show so we talked about significant birthdays, how we wrapped that up. We created our CRUD application all the way through and through. That was, how was, how was the challenge for that for you? What, what, as you're typing and I'm instructing you, what, what was going through your mind? Uh, I feel like I was able to absorb all of it. Super cool to understand. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I'm ready to, to do whatever's next. All right. So you were presented with the challenge. And mm-hmm. so if, if we were to give the significant birthdays a T-shirt size of complexity, it would be a small, a small uh, size T-shirt in complexity. 
And so one of the challenges that I presented was, hey, go recreate significant birthdays, but we're going to be doing it with significant events, right? And so you're off to the, to the horse races with that. Mm-hmm. Um, where, where are you at with that? So far, I created the events. I created the tables and the stored procedures are working. All right, so let's um, let's share your screen. We'll bring up uh, SQL Server Management Studio and talk us through what you've done. Wow, your machine seems so fast. Mm-hmm. Look at that. All right, so I'm going to open up the significant database, find my table for the tech histories. So you're going to go into the designer and show us what you did to design this table. Yes. So my table has a, uh, so the first column, I have it as an ID so we can identify it. And for this ID, um, I set it as the primary key. Okay. So that one is the um, main one. And, and um, the second column, I did a uh, data type. So the int is just the number for the ID. Okay. It doesn't have any nulls because we want them to all have a identification. Okay. And for the pr- column properties, what I did was um, for the identity, T specification, we wanted that to be um, just automatically inputted. So that way we don't have to do it ourselves. So we had the uh, switch it to yes and make it indexable. So it increments uh, each time we add a new one. So I think if you expand on there, it auto increments. So auto- expand, expand the identity specification. Yeah. Yeah. So it starts at one and increments by one every time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. What else do we got in there? Um, Next up, we have a date for the date of the history. So we want to put a date time so we can mark it as our, another identifier. And it's not going to have a null because all of our history dates have a date. Mm -hmm. And then we have a title. Um, so it's just going to be a short little description of what happened. Um, and that's going to have a N bar car. So we can put all kinds of characters on there. Um, and then we have our description, which is a, a little short description of what happened on that day. Um, and a N bar car of 200, just because uh, it's just a short description that we're going to do. Okay. And uh, it's not going to have any nulls because we want to put a description of what happened that day. Cool. And then we have our created date and updated date. Uh, Created at has a uh, property of getting the UTC date. So whenever we create, uh, uh, what's it called? A new record. A new record. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll have the date that it was created at. And the UTC date is the universal time and date. That's right. So we can have it uh, be, uh, you know, the correct time and date for your location. That's right. Because if you store the UTC date, that's that's the universal time. And then whenever you want to display it to someone in New York, you can just do the calculation from UTC to East Coast time and you display the time on their time zone versus if you display it to someone in a Pacific time zone, you just do the calculation from UTC and you display it in the correct time in their time zone. So yeah, that's cool. Cool. That's our little basic table that we got. Cool. Now let's talk about NVARCAR. NVARCAR. What is the difference between VARCAR and NVARCAR? Yeah, so when choosing the data type that you want, it has the N, N car, 
and VAR car. And um, the regular N car would no, just- No, you're talking like regular VAR car. Regular VAR car would have um, just like plain text, um, plain text. So it wouldn't have any special characters like the little squiggly mark on top of some ends in, in the uh, Spanish language or any kind of Asian uh, characters, you wouldn't be able to display them with Varkar. And that's because of Varkar only being able to store single byte characters. And so in order to display special characters such as Chinese, Korean, Japanese, Spanish accented um, letters, you need double byte characters. And so the N Varkar allows you to store double byte characters. So if you have N Varkar 50, even though you can only store 50 characters, you're taking up 100 characters of the storage because you're allowing it to store double byte characters. Even though it doesn't need it, it's still allowed to store, but it takes up double bytes. So it, it'll basically your NBAR car 50 becomes NBAR car 100 behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So why didn't we use um, NBAR car max on the description? Um, I chose 200 just because um, it was just a random number. I thought like Twitter numbers, you just have a short description, but for max, um, I mean, we could have done that. It, it would make it so that we can put a lot more characters and um yeah it, i mean like it i don't think it would really make a difference yeah yeah i mean the the nice thing about nvarcar and nvarcar for that matter is that you're setting the maximum storage capacity it doesn't mean that it's always going to take that maximum storage capacity. So we could have easily put NVARCAR max on here, which comes out to be 8,000 characters. But whatever you store in there, so if you only store five words and each word has five characters, total of 25, you're only going to take up 50 characters worth of space. You know, mm -hmm. you would never take up 8,000 every time. And so that's the nice thing about the VARCAR is it's, it's a variable length field that can change in length every time when you store something in there. So you could have easily gone in Varkar Max, but then how does the user, how does the user, how would the user use 8,000 characters? I mean, so I can see from the user standpoint, 200 characters is probably good enough because mm -hmm. you would have to end up creating a Word document on the internet to be able to store 8,000 characters, you know? So that's a good call. I, I like I like the way you were thinking about the whole Twitter limitation. You know, like, yeah, hey, yeah. let's just limit them to 200. They have to get creative on what they put in there. Cool, awesome. And so uh -huh. you, created, you created some store procedures for this. Yes. So we want to be able to uh, insert Insert, delete, update, and select. And then I did select by ID and select all. Nice. Um, so for the, I'll start with the insert. Um, let's open this up. For this stored procedure, um, it opens up the significant database and it inserts a uh, well, it's going to open up, uh, what's it called? The ID, date, title, and description. So that's all we need to uh, have a new record. So you got to pass in those values so that these parameters receive it. Yes. Got it. So these are our parameters. And then it begins. And then you insert all your information. And they are values of... Um, you know, integers are only on the ID, uh, date mm -hmm. is only on the date, and then we have our two characters for the description and title. So it's interesting how you have the ID out parameter on line nine. On line nine? Yes. Yeah. So this is an out parameter, which means that 
you're basically keeping a pointer so that you can assign that ID the next ID that's incremented. Mm, okay. and, then, and then that's sent back to the program. It says, hey, this record that we just inserted for you, by the way, here's the ID for it, which is the primary key. And then uh, for the set ID scope identity, that's, uh, that's creating the new number, right? Or is that? No, that's actually grabbing the last number that it created. Oh, okay. So line 16 through 23 inserts the record. And when it inserts it, it automatically inserts the new primary key number. And all you're asking it to do is says, hey, give me that last um, primary key that you just created. And it gives you that next number that oh, it just, okay. when it, it inserted the record. Correct. Yes. Because we put it as the increment by one and it'll increment by itself. Exactly. Exactly. Ooh. So I then mean, now, but what if you have like five, 10 people inserting at the same time? What number is it going to grab? That, that is an interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's, here's the thing about, about scope identity. The keyword scope means that it's going to grab the identity based on your scope. So in other words, when you, with your connection to the database, ran this store procedure and insert it, the identity is limited to your scope. So it doesn't matter if there's a thousand people inserting, mm -hmm. it only cares about the one that you inserted. So using the, the scope identity, just limits it to your connection, which is what scope uh, represents. So it'll be a thousand people, but it's just focusing on you. You know, this is like, <laughs> let's just focus on you. No one else. <laughs> cool. Cool. All right. And then we have uh, delete, which um, is able to grab the ID and uh, just delete it. So you pass it, you pass in the ID as a parameter. Mm -hmm. You pass it in as a parameter, and then the ID gets deleted from the stored procedure of the text history. Cool. And that's pretty much that. And for the update. That's it, birthdays. Oh. For the text history update, it's going to be similar to the uh, insert, but we don't have the um, parameter of out once it comes in because we're, um, we're going to be putting it in over here. So on line 21, the where clause limits what gets updated. In other words, you're saying, hey, go and update this table and set the values of these fields to these parameters or these values based on the parameters but limit where this happens to this ID. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if that where clause wasn't there, it just ripped through the whole table and just update every single record with the same exact value. So the where is just happens to be like a filter. Mm -hmm. So it's just create or updating that one ID from that. That's right. So let's go back to your delete. You also have that where clause in your delete. Yes. Otherwise, it would just delete every single record in your table. That would be very destructive. <laughs> <laughs> so this is why these where clauses are so important. You know, it's like, you're going to go perform this action, but only do it where this criteria matches. Cool. Cool. And then we have the uh, select all and select by ID, um, which are going to be pretty similar. But for the select all, um, we're not passing in a, any kind of uh, parameters. parameters. Um, we're just going to be selecting the record. So it has the ID, date, title, description, all that. And this right here, 
doesn't have any where clause, which means that it's applying this statement on the whole table. Mm -hmm. So there's no filter, there's no limitation. And the select by ID would have the where clause because that's the record that we're trying to find. Um, it's going to be a filter for a specific record. Yep. That we're putting in. Very cool. Yeah. Very nice. So do, do all these things work? Yeah, they do. Let's, let's see it. Do you have all right. <laughs> did you write tests for them? Yeah, I did. All right. All right, should we start with the insert? Yeah. All right, we need to get a, a, new, a new one. This one's already in there. All right, let's see. Let's start with, well, we have a whole tech month, huh? Yeah. On, let's see, September 27. Let me grab this and put it here. September 27, 1998. Okay. Google's fake birth date. Oh, so that's a problem. Yeah. So you're using single quotes, but you need a single quote in there as well, right? Yeah. And the way that we get around it, go ahead and put the single quotes back in there. Oh. And then go ahead and type in... Google's without the single quote, I'll show you. I'll show you how to come back and we'll, we'll take care of that. Birthday. Okay, so let's go back to between the E and the S. So in order to tell SQL Server that you need to insert a single quote in there, you do three single quotes. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> or two of them. I'm sorry. You do two of them. Yeah, two single quotes. All right. So, yeah, it is weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Google couldn't decide what date to pick out of their milestones? Uh, sure. All right. Uh, what about, couldn't decide um, which milestone set as their birth date. Oh, as their birth date. So Google could decide, or you want to put couldn't? Couldn't. Look at you. You already got the double quote already down. Cool. All right. Are you ready? I was born ready. Let's execute. Whoa. <laughs> so it's number five. All right. Let's go and test your select by ID. All right. Bring up your test for that. So it's number five. Oops. Execute. There it is. There it is. Google's fake birthday. <laughs> nice. Very cool. All right. Uh, should we update it? Sure. You should copy all that from your, oh, yeah. from your insert. And then we can just go in there and copy or change something in there. Um, so they say uh, the 27. We could just add something on here. Yeah. They say 27. Peace. There we go. Let's execute this. There it is. Wait, let's expand it. Did it not go? Um, That's weird. 
Oh, hold on. I think you have to do um, the wrong ID. You you gotta do ID five. Oh, oh no. Five. Wait, before you run it, you can copy. You can copy the description from your ID number four, and then update your ID number four again. So right click on it. Right click. No, no, on the description. Oh. Yeah, right click and copy. And then you can just go ahead and paste it somewhere in Notepad or something, and you can update it later. All right. What is it? Oh no. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna update. <laughs> Here we go. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that's All pretty right. fast that updated <laughs> fast uh record number four all right so um well this is the select all that's why why is it select all oh because you ran select all um yeah, so if you run it now, it'll just. Um... I can delete. Uh, right? Yeah, you could delete line number one. There we go. It's been affected. So, oh, you know what? You did a select all because you want. Yeah. So you want to do it before and after. Whoops. Oh, no. Control Z. All right. Let's copy that again, put it after. All right, let's check it out. Cool, so we got the wrong one on number four, like we expected. And then uh, we updated it on number five. Well, why don't we just delete number, you can test, you can test your delete and just delete number four. Cool, let's do that. <laughs> it worked out. <laughs> cool. So let's delete number four. And then we'll uh, just copy this guy real quick. Cool. Excellent. That one's gone. Oh, that was all of them. Cool. Cool. <laughs> so everything works. Yeah, yeah, I got all your tests. <laughs> This is good. All right. Very cool. So you're going to be on your own um, doing the data access and doing the, the uh, API and, and doing the React application. Since you already have a copy of all that for the significant birthdays, you just got to put all that together for significant events. Yes. So you're still going to go on that. In the meantime, you and I, we're moving forward. We're going to start working on um, we're going to create an address book, but it's not just your regular old fashioned black book. Google has a nice model. I like Google's model. So if you bring up, uh, oh, go ahead and keep on sharing your screen. Yeah. Bring up Chrome. So obviously their UI fits in with their whole Google user interface, right? They have a theme that they go in. We're going to create something similar to this, but we're going to be using the Bootstrap theme. So we're going to be using React. We're going to be using Bootstrap. Um, and so we're going to create our pages in such a way that we'll be able to replicate this, but it's going to have a Bootstrap look to it. Does that, does that sound about right to you? Yeah, that sounds fun. We can do that. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and um, I'm wondering, we should create a um a repo in github okay so that we can go ahead and store this on there it's always important to put your stuff in github because you need that you need that um that control z so let's call it um don't call it address book let's call it um oh man let's come up with a let's come up with a good name all right we could come up with just contacts i mean that's that's it's pretty basic though. We can we can yeah. do something something better. Um, 
I mean, it is Google. We're going to replicate Google contacts and we could just say contacts. <laughs> G O N T A X. What about G O O N T? Guntax? Like, like Google? <laughs> Go Gontax? <laughs> Gontax? Gontax? <laughs> Yeah, I like I like Guntax. Guntax. <laughs> like it's we're the, speaking we're speaking uh Danish now. Yeah, we're speaking it's the German version of Google Contacts. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so let's let's put a let's put a description in there called Google's version of Contacts. Wait, wait no, sorry, the German version. <laughs> Don't put that. <laughs> let's just put uh a clone of so, Google's contacts using Bootstrap. I'll tell you why. I actually know the reason why. The reason is, <clears throat> for whatever reason, Git was created specifically for the Unix system. And so Unix, you can, you can have lowercase and uppercase. So uppercase Guntax would have been a different folder from lowercase Guntax. But because Windows doesn't different, differentiate that, I think they they decided to just say, hey, you know, we're just going to do everything lowercase for React, create React app, because we're working on both Windows and Linux systems. And so they treat the file system different. And I think it just got confused with the parent being uppercase and the subfolder being lowercase. And there was just a confusion there. So I, that's how I, that's what I think is going on. So, okay. So our Goon Talks, we've created the app called Contacts, which is fine. That's it's okay. Um, so I'll go ahead and CD into contacts and then do the yarn start. Do the yarn start, just like that guy who sings a song, do the Tootsie Roll. <laughs> <laughs> yarn start. Do yarn the yarn start. <laughs> All right. We got our app. Let's open up Visual Studio Code and start hacking. Let's hack. This is it. Cool. All right. Excellent. This All right. So we need to start changing some stuff on. Huh? Let's go into that source folder. And I think I think what we need to do is we need to modularize this a little bit. Okay. So we need to, we need to add, hmm, let's see, how do we want to do this? We need to add a folder inside the source folder and let's call it <coughs> Let's go. Thank you. And it'll be lowercase list. Yeah. And then inside that list folder, go ahead and create a file and call it uppercase list dot JSX. Oops. Do we call it JS or JSX? Oh, it's just JS. Yes. Yeah, just yeah. By the way, you can use JS and JSX inter interchangeably. It, it okay. treats them the same. And let's just make a placeholder page. Let's go ahead and import React. <clears throat> It'll be a lowercase r from React, yeah. In the, in the training videos that you're looking at, is there, are they using uppercase React or lowercase React? Yeah, it's like uppercase and then this one's lowercase. Oh, okay, go ahead, go ahead, do the uppercase React. Don't let me derail you. All right. And then are they using semicolons or they're not using semicolons? Yeah, semicolons. Cool. 
And then uh, let's go ahead and create. Um, so we're going to be using functional components, right? So this is going to be a constant list. And that's going to be equal to um, a function. So open close parenthesis. And then using the fat arrow, we start the body of the function. Oh, the fat arrow goes outside. Yeah. Yeah. And then let's just use a, a div return. Oh, actually, here you need to return, return. No, instead of that, um, you need to return. So oh. let's, yeah. So return, open, close, parenthesis, and then inside of the parenthesis, press enter. And then inside on line five, you can go ahead and type in div. And then inside there, let's just put a, let's just put an H3 tag. So you can press enter. And then just put a placeholder for contact list. All right, cool. So let's talk about, oh, and then after line 11, you have to export default list. Um, and then this, oh, you know what? On line three, your contact list is uppercase L. It needs to match the file name. Uppercase L over here. Yeah. So this one too. Yep. There we go. So let's talk about this for a second. So line four through line 12 technically is one line. Mm -hmm. I don't think you need a semicolon in that line 11. Oh. But because line four through 10 is technically one line, you do need a semicolon at the end of line 10. Now, the, the whole thing behind the parentheses is that JSX gets transpiled into other JavaScript code. And the return with the parentheses just allows you to put HTML code or JSX code in between those on multiple lines. So that's that's all it really is allowing you to do. And it respects it and it doesn't throw an error um, because it knows that that's technically one line of code, but it's gonna get it's gonna get transpiled into something different. It's gonna be transpiled into JavaScript, essentially. Got it. <clears throat> all right. And um, let's create another folder called um, create. Uh, lowercase c, yeah, for the folder, then an uppercase c for the file name and class or the function. Go to it. And then did the constant. Oh, all these function, function stuffs. You know, there's a shortcut with your keyboard. If you do control tab, it'll toggle between your tabs. So yeah, if you just toggle once, it'll take you to the list. There we go. And then you toggle again, it'll take you right back to the create. So you could toggle between those two tabs. Cool. All right. So remember, you need an uppercase C, and then you need an equal sign after the create.
And so in here, we're just going to create another placeholder. So you would do the, the same way. Return. Oops. The export default. Excellent. All right. Let's uh, save these two files. Oops. And then what we're going to need, we're going to need navigation, right, to go between these two. So we need so, another folder? No, no. We need uh we actually need to import um we need to import the um uh, React navigation, remember? So if we go do a Google search really quick and look for React navigation. It's not this one. It's a different one. Let's... Navigating? No, it was. Um, let's go look at that old project for um, for the significant birthdays, and let's go look at the at the package that we have in there. So open up a, so if you right click on, um, on your, down at the bottom on the start bar, right click on your Visual Studio code and then new window, yep. And then go and open up the significant birth dates. And we could look at the package.json. We can go in there and look at what it is that we're using for navigation. Uh, is it in here or is it, oh, is it, no, it's not this one. It's a different folder. I think we have a, um, a different folder. Um, where do we do that? Did you, um, sandbox maybe? Oh, is it under sandbox? Is it, is it road to code? No. You can go back, go ahead and cancel this. You can go look at your history. So go to file. Uh, let's see. Recent. Recent. Significant. Significant web app. There it is. And then look at the, um, look at the um, package.json. Oops. And it'll give you a, it'll give you, go ahead and maximize this window. There we go, finally. Oh. So here's the dependencies, right? Let's go look at what. I think it's called React Router, isn't it? This one? Yeah, so let's go look at, let's go look for, um, let's go Google React Router. So we can easily just go copy this line, put it in our package.json and then rebuild our app and it'll bring it in. But really going through the practice of how do you add this is really the key, right? So we're gonna be using the web one. And there's your installation. Uh, which one? This one? Oh, Over right. on, yeah, yeah. 
So remember you're using yarn, you're not using NPM. Okay. So yarn install yarn. No, it'll be yarn add. Yarn add. React router DOM. So you can copy the React router DOM portion of it. But since you're using yarn, um, you would use yarn add. Yarn add. And you could, yeah, go back to here. And I think that's the one thing that you shouldn't be afraid of doing is looking at projects that you've worked on. Mm -hmm. And it's like, hey, what was this called? You know, and you can just easily go and refer back to it, right? I could have given you the answer, but I felt like, ah, you know what, let's go. And um, how do we figure this out if we didn't know, you know, but like we've done this before. So let's go ahead and, and see how this works. All right. All right. So we need some navigation. And so let's go back and look at your old project. And how do we do the navigation? Um, so it'd be under app. It'll be under app, yeah. So for this, we have, um, this is for that hamburger menu. So, should we use the hamburger menu for now, or should we just get the navigation going and then we can come back and do the hamburger menu after? Um, yeah, let's do it after. So we'll okay. get the uh, nav bar. So let's go look at the imports first, right? What do we need? We need browser, router, has router, switch, root, link. Okay. I would say you can go ahead and copy these. I think it's because that's what you would do if you were to go look at the example on Google, right? Mm -hmm. And let's go put that inside of our, uh, we don't need the bootstrap yet because we're not going to use bootstrap. Okay. So we'll add that to this. But we also need to get rid of, um, we also need to get rid of the logo and the, we, we could probably leave the app CSS in there, but I think we can probably get rid of the logo because we're going to change this app. Okay. Go for it. Oops. There we go. And then scroll down to the bottom and let's get rid of all that logo stuff. Logo. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. So what you'll probably want to do only because of your other app, having all the bootstrap stuff in there, let's go look at the Google example and see what, what would be the easiest way to. So let's go, you see up here on the left-hand side, it says examples. Oh, there you go. Basic. Yeah. So starting at line 18, that's where this is kind of what we need, right? We need, we need home, we need list. Actually, home, yeah, home, list, and create. Yeah, those would be the ones that you need. So you would, you, essentially, you would change your, your app.js file to look similar to this. So I would start with line 20. Router. Yeah, and I would just copy that one line. Let's copy one line at a time, line 20. And let's go back to your app. Yeah. And so here, yeah. So your so what's going to happen is that router needs to be the outermost div. So you got to get rid of div oh. altogether. Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's go look at what else we need. Now we need some divs and some ULs and some, so let's, you know, one line at a time, let's copy the div. 
All right. Okay. What else do we need in there? And then we have the unordered list. And then the list item. List item. All right. Now we can go look to see what else we need in there. Oops. Uh, link to yeah. home. Yeah. So your home would end up being your list, right? The so list. instead of instead of home, it'll be list. Oh, yeah. All right, and then we have another one. That go. That goes right after. And then we have the about. And then for the about, we're going to do create. That's right. I think those are the only two items that we need. Yeah. But there's other stuff that goes after the div, I think. So let's go look at the example. So after the, the menu, we have the switch. So they have an HR, but we do need the switch. And the switch goes inside of the, of the div. All right. And then we have a Ex what exact path to home and an exact path to about. So your home component is actually going to be your list, your list component. Then our next one would be the create. So you know what's interesting is that Visual Studio Code did some magic for you. If you go way up to the top where the imports are at, mm -hmm. oh, it didn't. Oh, okay. So it hasn't imported. So you need to import the create and the list components. Create from. Um, you're going to have to go into dot forward slash create and then forward slash. There's another forward slash. Oh, create. Mm -hmm. Got yeah. it. Yeah. And you do the same thing for the list. All right, let's uh, save and see if it's compiled successfully. Let's see, hey, there it is. All right. So you can navigate between the two. Place order for create, place order for contact list. Cool. So now you can go to, so you can either copy the code from your previous project 
But if your previous project wasn't there, and remember, we need a search as well. We're going to have to go to get react, get bootstrap.com and go look at their examples to see what examples we want. Um, yeah, you go to the, yeah, I think it is. Oh yeah. What's between, what's the difference between the examples and the docs? Yeah. Oh yeah. You want the docs. And then you want to go and search for nav. You can actually go to the search box. Oh, right there. Yeah. Nav and tabs. So let's go look at an example of what we want. So remember. I think if you save this, we should have our navigation according to Bootstrap. Let's see it. Bootstrap. Hey, there it is. Google Look at that. Syntax. Sweet. So the only thing is, is that our placeholder is coming up right next to the menu. We want it to come down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So what happened to our page and why is it coming up there, right? Um, let's go look at your other project and see where we put the switch statement in relation to the um, to the whole navigation thing there. Where's that switch statement? Switch. There we go. Okay. So where, so we have that whole switch, but oh, so it goes outside of the nav. So you see on line 51, oh, the yeah. nav ended. So we have to put our switch statement, we have to put it outside that nav. Okay. In order for it to appear under the menu. You can just move it, your switch statement. You're going to have to move the code. Oh. Oops. No, no, you need that whole section. Oops. So scroll up a little bit so I can see the line numbers. So from 31 to 30, there you go. Yeah, that's what we need. We need that to go after the nav. Yep. And then let's fix the indention on that stuff. Um, I think list by itself. Oh. And then create by itself. Hey. Yeah. Let's get rid of the empty lines after line 42. And then if you scroll up, you got some empty lines up on top. Line 31. Let's see what else we got that we need to clean up. Yeah, it looks good. Let's save it. Let's see what we got. There we go. Looking smooth. Looking pretty nifty, huh? Yeah. Okay. So can you click on create again? Okay, so you see how create doesn't get bold. It actually stays at the dark list. But I think we're on such a good roll, Jonathan. I think we should fix this stuff on the next episode because we yeah, did yeah. we did quite a bit of work here <laughs> that stuff over. And then for the kids to be able to follow along, we gotta we gotta give them bite-sized chunks of this information. We can't give them the pound of Reese's pieces <laughs> code, you know. We've learned from this already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean. 
I mean, you think about it, it's like you, you can go back and forth between the bootstrap examples and your code and, you know, whatever you've done in the past, you can kind of piece it together. Mm-hmm. That's really what it's all about, you know, is getting all this stuff to work in a smooth way. And believe it or not, it's like the whole thing is that you don't want to create one project as your one and only learning project is like you want to create a bunch of small projects and every project after that is a bigger project and a bigger project because you're always going to come back to the basics and those basic building blocks is what creates that big application eventually we've done this before right but we like we were stumbling through it actually this time it went kind of smooth huh mm-hmm. i was like oh man i mean and i I don't remember doing a whole lot of talking. I mean, you were doing a whole lot of typing. (laughs) (laughs) It's going to be one of the quietest episodes we ever publish, I think. (laughs) I'll just do music the whole time. Yeah, yeah, seriously. It could be all your typing is going to be fast forwarded to like 15 minutes of a podcast or something. (laughs) But I think I think this is a good stopping point. I think this is a good place. You know, we've got our navigation in. We got our placeholders in place. Um. I think what I want to do next next episode is take care of the the uh, aria selected or whatever that aria thing to make it so that when you click on create it turns to the darker color. Mm-hmm. Or the aria current aria current yeah so we're gonna have to program that in there, and so we'll go ahead and and we'll we'll create the click events for that and and change it, and then also. What I want to do is next week, I want to, I want to add the search capability. So we end up at a search page, you yeah. know, and so it'll be kind of cool to, to get that in there. So I think this is a good stopping point. Let's go ahead and save or commit all your changes and push them up to the, uh, to get. Okay. You need to do that. Yo, well, you, you got a couple of different ways of doing it. You probably know them. You can do it right here. Uh, no, you can't do it right here because you got to go up one folder. So you okay. can do it. Actually, you know what? If you go to Git command line or, yeah. You know what? Let's go to the Git command line. We haven't done that in a while. Yeah. I was thinking maybe the Git command line on. Oh, on Git. Yeah. Let's go ahead and yeah. stop the server. Uh, how do you do it? Control C. There we go. Yes, terminate. <laughs> and then uh, where are you at right now? What's your current directory? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's exactly where you need to be right there. Oh, cool. All right, so we do git. Um, commit. Commit. You have your notes? I still have it, yeah. Yeah, bring them up. <laughs> Where is it at? Open. Hmm. The less I talk, the more you learn. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is it. Nope. Where do I have? Have it. Oh, here we go. I go Found to- him. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna get commit. Oh, I'll just leave it on the side. Yeah. Commit. Um, creating or working navigation. Or working bootstrap navigation or navigation with bootstrap. Okay. Cool. We're there. Um, and then get where are we at? Oh, get push. Uh, I think it's main, right? Um, no, I think you just do. Um, I think right now you could just go ahead and do a, a git push because you you didn't create a branch. Okay. 
So you could just do a git push. It's just going to push it into the main branch. Cool. Had you created a branch, then you would have to push it into, you would have to push it and create okay. a branch on the server. And then, yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. But since you you didn't create a branch, you could just push it straight into there. Very cool. Um, yeah. So next week we'll continue. We'll do the programming for that, um, for the navigation and, and we'll add the search. And I think with the search, we're going to need a third page. <laughs> cool. So we'll put that together on the next episode. These are a small bite-sized chunk of code that you can go and follow along with us once we publish them. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Any final words? Uh, let's make another app. <laughs> cool. All right. Until the next episode. Peace out.